I'm going to consider a simple example of the application of Poynting's theorem, and this example is going to be a current carrying wire. So we're going to think about a simple cylindrical current carrying wire. Um, I'm going to draw it here. So we have a, a length L, we have a radius A, the current I is flowing along the wire, and there is a potential difference across the wire of V. We know from simple circuit theory that the power dissipated P is equal to VI. Now let's just think about that in terms of fields. So if we define um, our coordinate system so that we've got Z lying along the wire, um, we're then going to use cylindrical polars as usual. We can specify that the energy, uh, sorry, the, the electric field E is equal to V over L in the Z direction. Um, the current density flowing in the wire is going to be I over 2, no, not over 2, over pi A squared, that's the area of the wire, also in the Z direction. Now if we think about what we talked about earlier, the power P, which is dW by dt, um, which is equal to the volume integral of E dot J dV, um, and that can be written as the volume integral of V, the potential difference, over L, I over pi A squared, times the volume integral element, which is just VI over L pi A squared, multiplied by the volume, which is just L times pi A squared. So, of course, that's equal to VI. That's entirely sensible. That gives us the same result, essentially using the same basic information. Now let's turn to the fields and to Poynting's theorem. Um, we've already said that E is equal to V over L in the Z direction. What about the magnetic field? Well, the magnetic field we can derive using um, Ampere's law. So we've got curl B is equal to mu naught J. Um, if we put a circular surface, which is crossing the wire, um, then we can rewrite that as the closed loop integral of B dot dl, that's using Stokes' theorem, is equal to mu naught times the surface integral of J dot ds. The surface integral of J dot ds is simply equal to the current. Um, and when we take the closed loop integral of B, we find that you can write B multiplied by 2 pi a, that's the circumference, and there shouldn't be a vector sign on the B there. Um, is equal to mu naught i. The B field, just from the geometry, must lie in the phi direction, so we say that B is equal to mu naught i over 2 pi a in the phi direction. That's a standard kind of example and result. Um, of course, that also means that the H field is equal to i over 2 pi a in the phi direction. So, Poynting's vector, n, is equal to E crossed with H. And that's going to have um, the magnitude of V over L multiplied by I over 2 pi A. And the direction is going to be the cross product of Z and phi. Now, the cross product of Z and phi is the inward radial direction. So what we would have to write is minus VI over 2 pi a l r hat. So that might seem a little bit odd. Um, the, the energy flow is coming through the curved cylindrical sides of the wire. Um, it might seem instinctively obvious that, that energy should be flowing along the wire, but remember that the energy flow, the pointing vector, is always perpendicular to the E field and the H field. Um, of course, the physical significance we have is that dW by dt um, is equal to minus the closed surface integral of m dot ds, that's the, the energy flowing in, um, minus d by dt of the volume integral of the energy density dv. We have constant electric and magnetic fields, um, therefore we can say that this term on the right here is equal to zero. Um, and therefore we say that 
dw by dt, which is just the power, is equal to the closed surface integral. I'm going to put the minus sign from above and combine it with a minus sign here and say that we've got vi over 2 pi a l r hat dot ds. Now, what is the surface that we're interested in here? Well, we have a closed cylindrical surface that, in, that is over the surface of the wire. That gives us three surfaces. We've got the two end plug caps, um, which are normal to the z direction, so they're in the xy plane. And we have the outer curved cylindrical surface of the wire, which is in the radial direction. That's the only bit that matters, because that's the only bit that has a non-zero dot product with the pointing vector. Um, and the pointing vector is constant, so what we find is that we have vi over 2 pi a l um, multiplied by the surface area. Now the surface area of the outside curved surfaces of a cylinder is the circumference 2 pi a times l and therefore once again we get that p is equal to vi. We wouldn't have expected to find anything else but it's always nice to find something sensible. Um, this shows us that there is a consistency um, this is an example where there's no change in the energy density in the fields, so we're only thinking about work done and the energy flow. Um, and it's nice to be able to derive a standard result from circuit theory using the full power of Maxwell's equations. Um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about a situation where there is no work done, um, so we're only thinking about the pointing vector and the energy stored in the fields.